the hero's journey always starts with just like the familiar world, right? It's just, it's the status quo. It's, it's just the way things are, right? And then this inciting incident happens. And it's, it usually comes in the form of, it basically, it leads into this call to adventure. Something happens that adds some greater uh, awareness to the hero, right? Maybe it's, they see an opportunity and a market is opening up, right? So at the same time, with that comes a call to adventure that what actually I've got a connection with so-and-so I could enter this market, right? Now, almost immediately after the call to adventure, there's the refusal of the call and there's the, there's a hesitation there. The hesitation could take one minute. It could be years that this hesitation goes on, right? Where they just don't want to fully step into what they want to step into. Then after that, there's the meeting with the mentor. And the meeting with the mentor, it's this kind of supernatural aid, right? It's just a little nudge or a little, they gain some kind of other information, or it truly can be supernatural in the form of, if we're relating it to everyday stuff, maybe they keep seeing a certain billboard or a message keeps popping up. And it's it's just in the front of their mind where they're, maybe they get, they get a, a surprise check or someone from their past reaches out with a new opportunity or something like that. And it's just like, it's the synchronistic kind of things that just push the hero just a little bit farther into really looking into it, right? After the supernatural aid, there's the crossing the threshold and crossing the threshold literally looks like, it's like, it's the point of no return, right? After you start the hero, it could be making the investment, right? It could be getting, buying the equipment. It could be buying the, the office space. It could be making the huge hire, or the, whatever the investment is. Once you sign on the dotted line, you, you can't unsign. You can't, you can't get your investment back, you're going. So then at that point, right after that, then becomes the road of trials. And the road of trials is really like where the hero learns what they learn, like who are their allies in the space? Who are their enemies in the space? Competition, if it's in business, right? Who are my competitors? Ideally, they've done their research before that. They know the competition before they put the deposit down, right? But this is really where they have like the face-to-face -face interaction with they, they're they're acquainted in one way or another with like the the rules and the laws of this new world that they've entered into. Then at that point, there becomes the midpoint, right? And the midpoint is the false victory. So they get something, you get something along the road, but maybe it's not it's not as satisfying. It's like it's the point where the the story can completely turn on a dime, and they realize I actually got into the market for this reason, or I actually want to be an artist to do this. And after doing enough and and struggling up through the road of trials enough. It actually, I actually need to pivot. And I'm seeing that this is actually the opportunity this way. So that's like the pivot point, right? Now at this point, now this is when we enter the low point. And the low point is they've made the pivot. They've, they've had that false victory a little bit, the unsatisfying win. And uh, the low point is really the point where it's the most struggle. It's the most doubt, right? It's the, why did I do this in the first place? I made a huge mistake. I'm out all this time. I'm out all this money. What have I done, right? And it's the point of, it's like, it's all hope is lost, right? I might as well give up, right? And so this is the make or break point. This is the make or break point in the hero's journey. I, it's the, it's, it basically, it prompts the apostasis where the hero or the company sheds their old skin. They have the opportunity to shed their old identity. They die a physical death, right? They die, they, maybe they were attached to a way of doing things or they were attached to a certain brand of music that they wanted to make that it made totally made sense on paper, but just they, they let go of that old way, that old commitment or the way they thought that it had to be done. And then they move forward, reborn in spirit. And almost every single time it has to do with like, just allowing yourself. It's like, you didn't even realize that there was this much easier method over this way, right? It's like almost a hundred percent of the time, the hero or the company or the artist realizes that it's actually, this was kind of staring me in the face all along. And it's, there's a reason why it's a cliche in storytelling, right? It's the reason why every rom-com, it's kind of like, oh, well, your, you, your heart got broken by the person you wanted to go for, but there was this, your true love was right in front of you the whole time, right? It's, it's like, it's a cliche for a reason, but it, again, it's a human story. We can all relate to that story. So after they have that awareness, then that becomes, now it's the, they, they have the rebirth, but it, it goes into the climax now. And they realize that after they've been reborn, they have every tool, they have every method that they need to slay that dragon and, and land the ship, basically. And it's, it's, the, it's the point of the highest stakes, the climax, the ultimate boon. They win. It's the, it's the massive success. But again, you can't have the massive success without going through the low point.